Good morning from Bucharest in Romania. This video we're going to talk all about warp stabilizer and how you can utilize it properly in your videos. Let's go! <laughs> Stabilization in filmmaking and video creation is extremely important. That's why you see people with glide cams, tripods, dolly cams, even gimbals walking around filming stuff. Now, think of warp stabilizer as like an additional tool at your disposal that you can use in post-processing to get even more stable footage and really kind of polish off uh, your end product. In this video, we'll be using two cameras and four lenses, some with stabilization and some without. Our first setup this morning is also my main vlog setup. This is what I've been using for the last two years. That is the Panasonic GH5 on a gimbal with the seven to 14 wide angle lens. Now the Panasonic GH5 has IBIS, which is in body image stabilization. However, the seven to 14 wide angle does not have IS. So it's sort of like a dual mix, which I've also kind of got on the, uh, the Canon, but the Canon has a movie digital IS, which is kind of built into its system, uh, which we'll touch on in a bit. Bit. but this is my main go-to setup for vlogging and I'm going to show you how you can utilize warp stabilizer especially in your b-roll here we have a couple generic street scenes from the heart of Bucharest and I'm walking with the gimbal and the GH5 and no warp stabilizer added and you can still see how shaky the image is now we've added warp stabilizer and look at how smooth the result is our next setup is again the GH5, but this time I've changed lenses to the 12 to 60 Leica 2.8, which does have IS built into the lens. So you got the in-body image stabilization of the GH5, which is five axis, plus then the IS on this lens. So if you go handheld with that, uh, the footage can still look pretty good. But again, the utilizing warp stabilizer is just sort of like an after effect. It's, it's to put finishing on your final touches. The more stabilization you can get in camera or with the assistance of another tool, the better. And then utilizing warp stabilizer afterwards will make it even smoother. And I'll show you that example once we get back onto the computer. But here's some footage, a uh, handheld from the GH5 and the 12 to 60 Leica. One additional point to shooting with the Panasonic GH5 is that I can shoot in a variable frame rate of 60, 90, 120, or even up to 180 FPS. And this helps significantly when putting warp stabilizer onto that footage. So I believe that this will work with your camera as well at home. If your camera can shoot 50 FPS or 60 or 90 or 120, try shooting your footage at that high frame rate and then modify it once you're back in post to fit your timeline. Once it's modified, you should be able to apply the warp uh, stabilizer effect. and I bet it'll work much, much smoother. The next setup we're gonna test this morning is the Canon EOS R with the 16 to 35 2.8. Uh, when this doesn't have image stabilization, the R does not have IBIS, so it's a lot shakier. Uh, Canon has tried to sort of make up for that by putting a digital version of image stabilization within the camera. And uh, so far, there's two different modes. The first one seems to be okay, uh, especially on the gimbal. I think that looks really good. But the second one is really warpy. It's trying to overcompensate and it sort of zooms in even and uh, I'm not even gonna go there I'm just not gonna use that at all uh, but I do think that the first version of the movie digital IS on the R uh, works pretty well and I'm gonna show you how I can utilize uh, that with this setup right now
Finally, our last setup here in the field is going to be with the 70 to 200 2.8 on the Canon EOS R. And the reason I wanted to put this on uh, is because it does have IS this lens, but also having the uh, the telephoto uh, allows you to get really, really like good shots at either a wide open depth of field, like say 2.8 or 3.5, or much more closed at like an F8 or even an F11. And that makes a big difference when utilizing warp stabilizer in post. So I want to show you some examples of uh, the good b-roll that you can get with the 70 to 200 handheld and then how you can add warp stabilizer afterwards to make it look even better. Welcome, this is the Airbnb that we have rented in Bucharest, Romania. It's also the temporary studio for editing this video. The idea is that I wanna bring you into the computer and show you a small portion of this video where I've applied warp stabilizer to three individual clips. So what we'll do is, uh, yeah, just like Zoolander, jump in there, I'll show you where to find the uh, warp stabilizer effect, how to drag and drop it over onto your clips, and then the difference between the clip before the warp stabilizer is applied and then afterwards. Let's do that right now. Okay, so here we are in the timeline. This is the, uh, the whole thing and what it looks like right now, but I really wanna focus just in on this one little segment here with the uh, couple different colors. So this is the part where uh, I'm testing out the EOS R and it's movie digital IS that's actually built into the camera body. So as you can see here, this is the first uh, part of the video where the uh, EOS R has none of the movie digital IS incorporated. And it's super, super shaky. So then I go in to uh, enable that first part of the movie digital IS, just that one uh, half one. There's actually two, there's one and two. This is the first one and it is much, much better even handheld. So now what I've done here is sort of cut that clip in half and I wanna take that second teal part, this one right here, and add the warp stabilizer effect. So in your Premiere Pro or Final Cut or DaVinci Resolve, whatever, you should have uh, the access to the effects tab just down here or up here at the very top of Premiere Pro. But because I've got the effects tab on my platform, I'm just going to go ahead and type in warp stabilizer. You should see it just right there. So the idea is as simple as just drag and drop warp stabilizer onto the clip you want to stabilize. And you should see it start to stabilize up here and what I like to do is actually wait until that finishes because if you continue editing or if you press play uh, sometimes it can pause that uh, process and then you don't know if it's actually stabilized or not. So now that that's stabilized we can go back and play it through you see the slight jitters and now boom look at how smooth that is. Fantastic. I'm going to play it back one more time. Super smooth. It just looks awesome. So this is the EOS R and then Boom. So much better, hey. So the next one we're gonna do is uh, this wreath. So this is without the warp stabilizer and with the uh, movie digital IS, the first part uh, engaged. Let's take a look at this. So it really doesn't look that bad. Um, it's a little bit shaky, but to be honest, it's really not that bad. And if in a fast like run and gun situation, I'd probably leave it. But because we can and we've got the time, let's go ahead and drag warp stabilizer over again. Same thing, we'll see the progress of it stabilizing and sort of figuring that out digitally. And it should be done in a couple seconds here. All right, so let's play it back now with the warp stabilizer intact. Let's see. 
Yeah, very nice. It looks super smooth, and that's how I'm going to keep it. And it's not too warpy, which is good. This last one is a bit of a tricky one because it's a reveal on a house with a wide-angle lens, which makes it really, really distorted. And I want to see if Warp Stabilizer will be able to sort of affect this in any way or make it better. So the idea, again, is just to take Warp Stabilizer onto the clip and see what happens. Now, a lot of warp stabilizer is kind of trial and error. It all is affected by the lenses that you're using, your aperture, your uh, your depth of field when you're shooting your frames, uh, the frame rate, and uh, how much movement you have in your sort of pan or your reveal, your tilt. So it's really important that you play around with warp stabilizer in your post-production with the footage that you shot in the field. So uh, don't rely on it too much either. I have uh, found myself getting caught out seeing like something, oh, this will be all right, I can fix it in post. And then you get to post and it looks super wonky and, and not very good. So you gotta try and, and just kind of feel it out as you go. And the more practice you get editing uh, utilizing warp stabilizer as sort of a finishing touches the the more you're going to understand where it's going to work and where it's not going to work with your camera and your lens setup so now that we've got the uh, warp stabilizer in that last clip let's play it back i think once this renders out it'll probably be super smooth it actually looks pretty good i'm, I'm happy with that that's not that bad and uh, yeah you can see this in the final video that you're watching right now if you want to just go back you'll be able to see the finished product but I think that looks pretty good. I'm happy with that, actually. So that's that. That is uh, Warp Stabilizer being put to use in the video. Uh, three like sort of short examples for you from the computer. Uh, but uh, again, like I just said, it's up to you to uh, you utilize these uh, new knowledge in the field and see if you can figure out how it works for you and your setup best. And you're gonna see a dramatic improvement in the stabilization of your footage, which is what this is all about. So that's the end of the video. I hope you've liked it. It's been a really kind of different one to make. I don't make tutorials very often, but I want to. I wanna share more of my video knowledge uh, with you here on the channel. And I think maybe once every couple of weeks, I'll pick uh, one thing that I do in all of my vlogs that maybe you don't see or it's sort of behind the scenes and really try and feature uh, that in a video. So if there's anything like that that you can think of, maybe it's got something to do with like drone cinematography or time lapse or any kind of editing uh, tutorial, please let me know and I will try my best to, uh, to figure out if I can make a video about that. So if you do have any ideas, throw them in the comments below and, uh, and let me know what you think. So as always, thank you so much for watching. I hope you like this video and I will see you on the next one.